Hi guys, Squirrel here and War Thunder 1.29 patch is out. In this video I'm going to talk you through the patch notes, the changes, show you any significant changes that are going to affect you, talk you through different kinds of uh, ammo loadouts that you can now have. Uh, let's start off with the interface changes. Obviously the log on screen, you've probably noticed that was different. And then we've got the battle, the battle button down here, uh, which used to be the research button down here. The two battle button is an interesting one because what you can now do is you can choose the game type you want from here and you can even say I want to play Germany with my BF109 and you'll see the BF109 F4 is now selected which so means as soon as I want to go to battle I just click to battle and bang it puts me in the right game type with the right aircraft. That doesn't apply for arcade if you're in arcade obviously you just pick the country you want uh, but again, you can just click on to battle and it'll take you straight in. That's really nice. Okay, so what else have they done? Well, um, one thing they've done is they've messed about with the fuel. Okay, so now when it used to go into battle in arcade, you select five minutes of fuel. Can't do that anymore. Um, each aircraft when you fly it has a minimum of 30% of its fuel load. And if you want to know how much fuel you've got in your aircraft, you go to game options interface and down the bottom you can change this so that it shows you your fuel level either only in full real battle or you can have it on all the time that's a new option i like to leave it on anyway it doesn't make that much difference in arcade um, because it doesn't you don't lose fuel anyway unless you've got a fuel leak but obviously in historic and full real battle it makes a difference now then, um, there are some changes to do with your profile if you click on profile, medals this has been redone, you've got nice new graphics and it also shows you progress. So for example, I've got these two medals here and if I hover over my distinguished service order, you'll see I need to get four more players killed and I'll get that medal there. Interestingly, even though there are no obviously Italian aircraft in this game, there are Italian medals, which I find slightly amusing. Uh, there's also the USSR, there's one for each country basically. Uh, look, the USA actually has a lot of uh, a lot of medals, none of which I've got, because I'm not really flying the US. But um, yeah, that's interesting. And obviously, you've got your logbook over here, and you can turn on, you know, which countries you want to see. Uh, it's all nicely done, actually. I quite like it. Okay, 1.29 has brought in some new aircraft. On the US side, we have the legendary B-25 bomber. That's this thing here. There are two variations of this. This is the B-25 Mitchell, as it's known. This was named after General Billy Mitchell, who was a bit of a pioneer of the US military aviation. This is a twin-engined medium bomber. It was introduced in 1941, and this thing saw action in every theatre of war in World War II. In fact, this thing saw service for four decades. They actually made over four, over 10,000, not 4,000, they made 10,000 of these things. In game, this thing has six machine guns, as you can see, six Browning machine guns, and it has a turret machine gun and two tu other turret machine guns, and it can carry up to uh, three 500 kilogram bombs. That's about a met uh, one and a half metric tons of bombs. A lot of firepower, decent bombage, quite a good aircraft. Let's take a look at the uh, aircraft changes in for Germany. Uh, the D0217, this is an interesting one. You'll notice there's D0217 attacker aircraft here and there's D0217 bomber aircraft. Now the actual D0217 was first brought out in 1941. At the time, this thing was actually a better bomber than the HE111 and the Heinkel HE-111 and the Junkers Ju-88. It could fly further, it could fly faster, and it had a bigger payload. For that reason, it was designated as a heavy bomber. Now, in-game, this thing can carry up to four 500-kilogram bombs. That's two tons of bombs. And this aircraft actually served all the way up till 1945 for Germany uh, on both east and western fronts. On the eastern front it fought as a strategic bomber and on the western front it carried torpedoes and took out uh, allied ships in the Atlantic. The attacker variation over here you'll notice comes with four 
machine guns. Um, so that's got a hell of a, you know, four machine guns and four cannons. <laughs> this thing kicks ass, seriously kicks ass. It's got a lot of firepower. And the bomber has got a lot of bombing potential. So that's quite a nice aircraft. Um, this one here, the N1, that was known as the Night Interceptor. Um, I wouldn't like to come up against that thing. If that catches you out, you're doomed. The Soviets, uh, not a great deal of change over here. Uh, the Tu-2 bombers, uh, that's this lot here, they now include several uh, modifications to the Tu-2, uh, which includes some heavier armor. Um, this thing, pretty much unchanged, carries 900 kilogram bombs, um, but like I say, it carries more armor now. Not a lot of change in the Soviet lineup. Let's take a look at Great Britain. Uh, Basically, Great Britain's got this thing, the Meteor. Now, this is a jet aircraft, and there's a few variations of it, the F-4 up to the F-8. Uh, the F-4 is has got four cannons on it, similar to the F-4SW, but the F-8 is capable of not only four cannons, but rockets and optionally two 1,000-pound bombs, making that a pretty versatile aircraft. Now this is known, this is actually called the Gloucester Meteor and what's interesting about the Gloucester Meteor, it was the first British jet fighter and the Allies first operational jet aircraft. This thing relied on the brand new jet engine which of course was developed by Sir Frank Whittle, uh, a British engineer. The funny thing is about this one is the Meteor first flew in 1943 and it only actually started operations in about 1944 when it joined the 616 squadron. Now, it didn't really see much action in the Second World War at all. This thing, however, the Mark 8, this only came into being in 1948 and only really took, uh, got delivered to the RAF in four, 1949. So this isn't really a World War II aircraft as such. In fact, this thing was the Royal Air Force's main single-seat interceptor all the way up to 1955 when the Hawker Hunter replaced it. So, not exactly sure what it's doing in War Thunder in World War II territory, but uh, yeah, bit of artistic license going on there. Finally, we get to Japan. Now, Japan really hasn't had much loving. It's got these zero fighters, which have always been, you know, a high turn capacity, uh, turn potential, but it's never really, it's always struggled in the bomber lineup. Well, not anymore, because it's got a couple of bad boys in the form of the G5N and this thing, the G8N. Now, this G5N, this was, well, this is the uh, the biggest bomber in War Thunder. This thing has got four engines and it can take up to four bombs. Let's just have a look at this. There you go. It can take four 1,000 kilogram bombs. That's four metric tons of bombs. That's that's just hell on wheels for anything underneath it. Um, the funny thing is about this G5N is it first got prototyped in 1941, but because it had such a high weight and the engines were really unreliable, they only made four prototypes. Then they put in this new Mitsubishi engine and called it the G5N2. And the G5N2, they realized they couldn't polish a turd and they just canned the whole project. So. This thing never really saw any real action. This on the other hand, the G8N1, this is the elder sister to the G5. It can't carry as much though, it only takes three metric tons of bombs. Um, but it has three turret cannons to protect it. Just look at that down there, three turrets. Unbelievable. Um, I wouldn't want to try and take this thing out because there's going to be that many turrets firing at you, it's going to be quite nasty. This thing was first prototyped in 1944. It's got four 2,000 horsepower engines on it. It's a mid-winged aircraft and the wing isn't that big. And it's actually got tricycle wheels, so two wheels and one at the front. Gonna make it rather interesting to land, I imagine. Uh, first delivered to the Japanese Navy in 1945. It performed well, but uh, they were gonna make a lot of these things, but as they got to the end of the war in 1945, they realized that they were losing the war and also they couldn't find enough aluminium alloy to carry on making it. So in actual fact, these things didn't hit much production, but they would have done if the war had gone differently. Okay, it's time to talk about another significant change and that is ammo. 
This is my Spitfire. My Spitfire has a 12.7 mm Browning machine gun times two of them, and it also has two 20 mm Hispano Mark II cannons. Now then, each gun in your aircraft can take or be loaded with different ammunition belts, and this is providing a very, very interesting twist because it's not now predictable when you see another aircraft to know exactly what it's packing. You might know that a Spitfire has these guns, but you won't know what type of ammunition they're using. And that, that's going to make for some pretty unpredictable stuff. Essentially, I've got two shell racks. This is the rack for my 12.7mm machine gun. This is the rack for my 20mm cannon. By default, I will have the, the basic ammo, if you like, which is not a lot of information on that, but it's going to essentially just consist of uh, round balls of lead, I imagine. But you can customize it. So the first thing you can do is customize it with this omnipurpose ammunition belt. You can then go on to go into more specifics. So later on, I can get a belt for air targets. So if I know I'm going to fly this thing around taking air targets, I can pack ammunition that's going to take air targets down. Similarly, uh, I can put belts with tracers in it. And I can also go for stealth ammo, which has no tracers in it. So if I want to attack things, and you know, tracers are those rounds that you see screaming in front of you that are lit up. Um, they obviously help you to, to aim, but it can also help the opponent to see where the fire's coming from. So you may opt for some stealth and not see any tracer rounds. And, you know, that's <laughs> if you're good, you won't need tracer rounds, but also the enemy won't know where the hell the fire's coming from, so it might buy you an extra second to take them down. You may wonder, as I hover over this, what the hell those letters are. Look at that tooltip there. Okay, so it says this is packed with API, 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 T, H, E, I bullets. This one is different. This one different again. And what does all that mean? <laughs> Typically for this game, it doesn't actually tell you. But I can tell you what it means. Okay, so what that means is there are one, two, three, four sets of ammo in the belt. So HEI, SAPI, AP, and then T. <clears throat> As you fire your gun, the first round that's going to come out of the gun is HEI. Now, HEI is a high explosive incendiary round. That's designed to, that's very good against aircraft because it will explode into a flaming ball, if you like, on impact. Then you've got the SAPI, which is a semi armor piercing incendiary round, followed by an armor piercing round followed by a tracer round. So every fourth round that comes out the gun will be a tracer round. If I decide to go for ground targets, my belt will consist of three lots of armor piercing rounds, followed by a high explosive incendiary, followed by a tracer round. Now there are all kinds of um, variations that you're going to see of these letters, but essentially they come down to this. I is incendiary, T is tracer, then you'll get an IT, which is an incendiary tracer combo. You'll get AP for armor piercing, HE for high explosive, and then you'll get some really weird variants that you might see, such as uh, APRC, which is armor piercing, reduced caliber. You might see composite rigid, hollow core. There's all kinds of other stuff. Rules of thumb here. <clears throat> if you've got big guns like the 20 mil, 30 mil cannons, then HE rounds are good against planes and soft targets and the AP rounds are going to be good against things like medium and heavy tanks. The smaller guns, um, the HE rounds are going to be good for sort of soft ground targets like AA and paper targets, you know, Japanese zeros. And the AP is going to be good against the heavily armoured planes with cockpit armour, uh, such as the B-17, the P-47. They have cockpit armour and armoured fuel tanks, so the armour piercing rounds will help to detonate that. Um, but essentially, that's what it means. HE generally means anti-air. AP generally means ground. And there's all kinds of variations in between. What they've tried to do is give the shell racks um, historic kind of significance. So if we go and look at, for example, a Yak-9T, you will see that it has a 37mm cannon. And that cannon has a belt packed only with HEIT. Now HEIT is High Explosive Incendiary Tracer, so each round is doing the job of being a tracer and an incendiary high explosive. Um, again, I assume that follows what actually happened or what was built in real life for the Yak-90. And then we've got the second one which we can go for, which is the APT. 
That's the armor piercing trace around, so that's going to be good. You want to pack that if you're going to go out taking ground targets on ground strike. Whereas you want to pack this if you want to go shooting other aircraft down. Maybe you want to go defensive on, you know, domination, that kind of thing. Your choice of uh, shell rack obviously will dictate the kind of game and game style you're going to go for. And you'll have to power through these, unlock and buy them by leveling up your XP. The economy of the game has been radically overhauled. And this is probably a really good thing. Let me give you an example. Right, basically what they've done is this. They've tried to make it so that the low to mid tier planes are more profitable and repairable. Okay, now I'll give you an example. Here's my Bowfighter Mark 6C. Before this patch, the Bowfighter Mark 6C would take 4,300 credits to fully repair. Now the maximum cost is 590. That is a massive, massive change. Whereas before, I would probably fire the Bowfighter, and if I got shot down quickly, I probably wouldn't repair it. I'd let it repair, let my crew repair it for free. Now, 590 Lions, yeah, I'm going to get that repaired. This gets more significance. As you go up to a historic battle for this aircraft, it used to cost 12,000 Lions to fully repair. Now it costs 840. And in a full real battle, it would cost 12,000. Now it costs 5,700. This is right across the board, actually. Uh, there have been some some upward adjustments, that, but they tend to be in the full real battle and high tier aircraft. The low level um, is, you know, significantly low now. The Spitfire is now 1100 to repair. Typhoon 830. These are sensible repair costs. My Wellington, which I would just leave alone if it got destroyed, it's only a thousand to repair it now. What's the downside? Well, the downside is the initial purchase price of these aircraft has gone up. So, you know, for example, if I want to order my Wellington, this is going to cost me 85,000. This has gone up from the previous version. So, the cost of entry, I mean, look at this Lancaster now, good God. 1.7 million lines to get this Lancaster. If I was to go and want to get the, the Meteor, I'm going to have to save up 2.8 million lines to get it. But on the plus side, it's only going to cost me 30,000 lines maximum re repair cost, which as a percentage, if you think about it, is quite significant. 2.8 million to buy and only 30,000 to repair. That means you can now fly these things and it not cost you an arm and a leg. So having made the investment to buy it, you can actually use it because if it gets destroyed, you know, you can repair it and fly again. I like that change. I like what they've done here. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go and play a game and talk about some of the other stuff. Uh, I'm going to fly Britain, I think. Uh, I'm going to go Arcade. Yeah, British. Let's go. We have Domination. Okay. Not much point getting my bomber out then. Let's start off. Let's open the batting with my Spitfire. Now, here's the first change, the fuel tank. Can't select five minutes anymore. This has a minimum of 20 minutes. Minimum 20 minutes or 30% tank. Um, 600 meter default gun. Wasn't that, I think that used to be 700 before. I'm not sure. I'm going to pop that on 500, I think. And off we go. Yeah, so no longer, no longer choosing five minutes of fuel and getting away with some lightweight turning. The main thing they've changed uh, is the damage model. So the damage model, they've basically refined everything. They've added 10 new damageable parts to each aircraft and they've tuned all of the existing ones. What that means is um, when you hit another aircraft now, it's going to be a lot more specific about which part of the aircraft you hit. That's significantly going to change shooting down bombers because you're probably going to have to shoot specifically at their engine or their wing or the front front gunner, that kind of thing, to take them down. Uh, aim, hitting some of these fuel tank is going to be a lot more difficult, I imagine. Also, you'll need to use the correct ammo type in order to make sure you do more damage. So if you start shooting ground targets with your HE rounds, you're not going to do much damage against them. Um, pack some armor piercing, and you'll be able to go and shoot in tanks, like those medium tanks, which is absolutely cool. They've also tuned the tuned the uh, the damage from bombs in particular and from rockets 
Uh, you have to be a lot more accurate now. The splash damage is a lot more realistic, so they say. Yet to try it out myself. Let's try and get down here and have some fun with this bow fighter. Maybe I should go for the Havoc. Yeah, let's go for the Havoc. Oh, pass out, pass out. Going too quickly. He's not seeing me. This should be good. Sayonara. Anybody behind? Yep, we got a lag. Okay. Where'd he go? Oh, he's not not attacking me. That was a mistake on his part, I imagine. The Wellington. Oh, that bow's a bit too close for my liking. Swing round. Yeah, again, he, he had an opportunity. Oh, shit. Not entirely sure where that dude just went. There he is. Flaps. Interesting, not seen that before. Um, I better go and land. Yeah, I've not seen that. It told me to retract my flaps. This thing's pretty screwed. Let's see if I can make a combat landing. Coming in a little bit quick. I think we should make it. I don't see any any enemies. As long as I don't smash my right wing into the ground, it'll be fine. This thing just keeps wanting to dip down. Oh, it won't straighten. Oh, crap. It wouldn't straighten. I was holding the uh, left out of the run, but it wasn't having any of it. So, they've made input. No engine required, 1000 XP. No wings required either, or tail section. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing there. They've made changes to the uh, sound system as well. Let's take this Typhoon out. I don't want a full tank particularly, nor do I want to take any bombs. Actually, what do I say? Yeah, let's take some bombs and go and try that. Uh, the sound system's been improved. They've improved the sound of the explosions, the uh, engine shutdown noises. When you collide with another aircraft, that's been improved. And they've added sounds for your flaps and your brakes and improved the sounds of the cannons of the guns. Uh, none of which I've heard significantly yet, but they, they say they've done this. They've also brought in uh, flight models for a, quite a large number of aircraft. Not all aircraft have proper flight models, they often just borrow other ones. Remember this is a beta, it's not a fully released product. Let's go and bomb some stuff here. Yeah, I could hear my flaps then. I hit something. I only hit one of them, and I didn't get a bomb marker, did you notice? I'm not sure if that's deliberate or not. Swing round. Oh, he's gone. Oh, hello. Shouldn't really be turn fighting this thing. Well. Yeah, that wrecked my plane. Oh, you've seen one of the, the new uh, the DO 217s. What shall I take out? Let's take out the bow. Oh, look at that. Holy cow. I can take one hour of fuel, or three hours of fuel. <laughs> That's interesting. That must be that minimum 30% thing again. Don't be around it. Um, yeah, not all of the aircraft have the flight models done yet, but they've brought in for quite a few aircraft. There's at least 15, including the Bowfighter uh, and the Boomerang, the few of the Junkers and the Messerschmitts, and the LA-5 and 7, and, and a number of others. It's all in the patch notes, um, but it means, you know, instead of this thing borrowing another flight, a flight uh, model, it's actually got its proper one, which is good. Apparently you get an award as well now for uh, damage that you do on enemy runways and if you destroy it you get awards for that. So 
they've obviously decided to recognise people who go bombing the, the enemy runway. And I just want to find this gladiator, actually. <clears throat> One of the things they brought in that I don't like, and that is that the squadron leader can't start the battle until everybody in his squadron has all of their aircraft repaired. Now, I don't get that, because often I will want to leave an aircraft unrepaired. I see me. I'm going to go over the top of him. And then swing around. I will often leave the crew to repair an aircraft. He, like he's trying to outturn me. His little biplane. He's buzzing around on his own. <laughs> Hilarious. He can just turn around on me all day. I need to go. Coming down on top of him was a mistake. Yeah. Sorry, bro. But uh, unfortunately for you, you're on the other team. <laughs> Bit of an easy kill. So on the whole, I think they've made some good changes in 1.2 round. Uh, I love what they've done with the economy model. Some of the new planes are quite interesting. They've obviously improved some of the graphics, brushed up the interface, improved the sound, brought in some new flight models, and uh, made it easier to uh, level up early aircraft, but obviously make it more expensive to buy higher tier ones, which should mean that you get fewer um, high tier aircraft being bought because people will have to save up and work for them not just in XP terms but also in money terms but having said that when you buy an aircraft you'll actually be able to fly it and even though you get it destroyed you'll be able to afford to repair the damn thing and I think that's all good but it's obviously geared towards people spending more credits buying higher tier aircraft which you know, necessitates people by you know spending some money and converting it. Do you see where that's going? Because it obviously it's the way they get money um, by making things more expensive to purchase. But uncannily, you won't die, will you? It's amazing. By making things more expensive to um, to buy. Wow. That Yak 90's gun is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I've not fixed that yet. 37mm cannon. It might as well shoot cannonballs at you. Unbelievable. It's just bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Plane gone. But, you know, what can you say? It's a Russian developer. It's a Soviet aircraft. Hmm. <laughs> Balance, that's the key. Yeah, on the whole, I like what they've done with this game, and I like where it's going. Um, but obviously, they do need money for this thing, so they need people to spend money, because that's how they pay for people to sit there developing the game. They're about to cap A, uncontested, I think. That guy smashed into the runway. I think he's going to cap this anyway. He's not touched down, I don't think. That's set him on fire. I didn't get a kill. Of course I didn't get the kill. It's tagged me with three kills so far. Let's have a reload. So yeah, having the enemy, uh, having the aircraft so expensive at high tiers gives you something to reach for, but it also means you're more likely to convert golden lions or real money into in-game currency to buy it. Sorry, golden eagles into in-game lions. I don't really have a problem with that. You can't expect a free game like this. A game like this costs a lot of, takes a lot of time, a lot of man hours to make. And it's quite a polished product, even though it's in a beta. And, you know, I've thrown in money. I, I've bought in-game eagles. Not just so I can level up faster and uh, show you guys more stuff, but also to support the developer. You know, I, I'm quite... I believe in supporting indie developers. And uh, they've got a good game on their hands here, and it deserves money. So I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, although this game is in the balance and looks like we've pushed over to the runways, which is interesting. That Yak 90 needs to die. 
I'll try and get him if I can. There's a swordfish in there. My, looks like my crew isn't very skilled. I seem to be struggling with visibility here. I uh, can't see very far. I know there's a plane over there, but I can't see it now. Oh my god. This is an absolute scrum down here. See, I'm only just starting to see friendlies. And they got more bloody aircraft coming in. This is a nightmare. I've got one BF-109 to back me up. Oh, I'm not going down there. Not anymore. No way. I'm climbing. Look, that yak's coming for me. You can see it. You can see it. Yeah, dude. Keep climbing. You've run out of energy. Try it on. I've only got one friendly. It's almost certain death to fly down there. But I want that yak. But, help, we're not going to win up here, are we? I know it's just the... Ah, they've removed combat flaps. This Yax so wants to take me out. Let's do the dance, bro. Let's do the dance. All about energy management. Yeah, he's giving up. He's flying back to his buddies. He was getting thrashed. Oh look, he's just take my uh, central airframe out. In one pass. So while I was busy fighting him, getting stuffed by somebody else, so yeah. I think I outmaneuvered the Yak-9T, but I'm over enemy territory. And um, this whole J didn't turn out too well. Look at that, it's just going to be spinning and floating. Let's go for... I don't fancy having to change this. I wish it would remember my selection. I've got a feeling we don't have many friends left, you know. Yeah. It's not going too well. For some reason, they've not come over and capped this thing. They're quite content to sit at their runway and... Uh, let us fly over there and smash ourselves. And they're going to win that way, I think. I can't possibly take down this many aircraft. Yeah, look, look, look at the Yak 9C. Having a good game. Got to deal with this guy. Yeah, there's that head on. <laughs> Always ends up like that. Always ends up like that. I never learn. Don't go into a head-on, because it will always end up like that. Well, I think that's it for me. I'm not taking my Wellington out there. Let's see what XP I got. Ooh, ooh, that was that new screen. I got four kills, five deaths. Not the best. Now that feels like... That feels like a lot less. 7,000 XP for shooting four aircraft down. Aircraft destroyed, four. 1,800 lines and 775 XP. That's that's pretty low. I get a feeling they've tuned that right down, you know. I thought I destroyed a ground unit. Didn't I bomb initially with my Typhoon? I'm sure it blew one up. Critical hits. Hmm... A landing. Don't know. That's not that impressive. Let's have a look at my repair bill. That's 1100 for that, so... <laughs> this is going to cost me more than I actually got back. 1100 500 that's 1600 Oh my good God. That's too much. 1600 2100 2600 And that, which is outrageous... Why is that so expensive? Is my crew not skilled up? No, I've got a very good repair rank. Hmm. I guess it's just because it's rank 11 then. Oh well. That's enough of that. Anyway, that's 1.29. I think it's a good patch. We've been waiting for this one for a little while. 
And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, that's all from me. Watch your six, guys. Take care.